What's up, my brothers and sisters? This is Josh back and having technical difficulties. Okay, there we go. All right, you guys. Hey, I want to I wanna start with tonight. Right off the bat, I want to I wanna encourage you all that each one of you is an ambassador for God. You have every qualification you need. Just by the fact that you have turned from your sins means that you are a child of the kingdom of God. Okay? Not about, I'm not concerned about you being a good person or even a good Christian. I don't give a rat's turd. But the fact that you are sent unto God and you call Him righteous and you're seeking Him, that gives you all authority. Okay? You have the authority to baptize, to preach, to lay hands on people, to pray for people. You have everything. A piece of paper doesn't mean squat with God. Okay? So you guys, don't let it paralyze you when you think that you're not qualified because everybody has got a story to say of what God has done for them. And everybody needs to hear that story. So get your stories out. Don't let anything cripple you because you are an ambassador and a child of God. So get it on. All right? I want to start there. Okay. I want to start here in 1 Corinthians 18. And we're going to go all the way to 30. Um... I'm going to give you 29 and 30 so you can kind of keep this in mind and see how it applies from 18. I mean, all of it before that as well. But I want you to, I want to read the last part and then I'm going to read it and then we'll, we'll see the last part again. Okay. But I want you to see the end in mind. Keep the end in mind. Okay. In 29 and 30, it says that no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Okay. So, if no flesh should glory in his presence, then Christ is responsible for each one of those things. So, so f first of all, of, for God, is it, but of him are you in Christ. Not because you believe, not because you were faithful, not because you repented, not because of anything, but because of God are you in Christ. Now, Christ is responsible for your wisdom, your righteousness, your sanctification, and your redemption. Okay, so if no flesh is glorying in his presence, then all of them are pointing to Christ for those things. If you are pointing to yourself in any measure to those things, then you are glorying in your own flesh. Now, I'm not saying that to condemn you. I'm trying to show you the fruitlessness of beating yourself up or trying to please God according to your own ideas because it's not going to work. You can go to church until kingdom come, and it don't mean squat. You can do good deeds until kingdom come, and it doesn't mean squat. Unless your conscience is right before God and your faith is completely in Him, you will not approach God to be a servant. Sorry. So, let's go back to 18. And many of you will know what I'm talking about. I was an atheist until I was 28, until God showed me the truth. Well, even then, wait, give me a couple of... I came in and I became a zealot, a, a totally fleshy Christian, right off the bat, like everybody does. And then, now I know the truth. It took me a couple of years, too. And now, I mean... To really see where I'm at now, it's taken me 14 years. So folks, um, cut yourself some slack. All right, God's gonna, God's got this. He'll handle it. So let's get going. Okay, First Corinthians 8, well, First Corinthians 1:18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. So there's many in the world and in the church that are still don't get this idea that that. It's merely by the hearing of the word are you saved. Okay? You hear it. You hear the truth. You see the truth. Then you're saved. Once you know the truth, you can't deny the truth. It's there. So let's, let's get on for quit, quit repenting all the time. Okay? For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. And the prudent would say that you need to work and earn. But... That's not wisdom with God. Christ is his wisdom. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? So the Pharisees, I bet you they're looking, they're feeling pretty foolish. Now, once they see that who they crucified, and they understand that they were so blind when they crucified him, I'm sure they're, they feel pretty foolish about that. But on the other side, it's a good thing, because once they are saved, they know it was nothing on their part. So then... If it's nothing on their part, then they know they can't lose it. Pretty cool. So you can just rest. For after, the, after that and the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. <laughs> so if you believe, you know it was just by hearing the, pre the preached word. 
the good news of your salvation. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews, a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks, foolishness. See, because the Jews, man, they were they're all conditioned by the law to go about and fulfill these religious works and these these endless monotonous rituals that were most uh, almost all of them were written by men, and they trampled all of the word of God in order to perform their rituals. Pretty interesting. So to them, to, to, to see that they built everything on those rituals and the temple and everything else, and they took great pride in those things. Well, when God comes along and shows you that that's all worthless, a lot of people are going to kick. They're going to go, are you serious? All this work? I'm not, I refuse to believe all of my life was spent in vain. But guess what? It was. So, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. So it's like, man, once you come into him and you taste his rest, you're just like, oh my God, God is so wise, so amazing. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Because you got to remember, what were the Pharisees telling Christ to do? If They, they said, if you are God, um, prove it to us and come off the cross. <laughs> but if he would have came off the cross... They would have been damned forever. I mean, talk about stupid. I mean, and that's all of us. We're that blind. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh and not many mighty and not many noble are called. I mean, look at me. Look at, you know, I mean, everyone that knows. I mean, and all of my brothers that are, that are believers, look at us. We're the least and the last that anyone would ever pick. I wouldn't pick me to preach the word of God. I'm a, I'm a douchebag. I've always been one. I mean, I'm just a cowardly little douchebag hiding behind a tough exterior. And anyone that knows me knows that's the truth. <laughs> I cared way too much what people thought. And conversely, you can see how much, how little I care what people think now. Because <laughs> my righteousness is Christ, not your opinion. So, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world. I'll raise my hand there. Uh, to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised. Um, has God chosen, yes, and the things which are not to bring to not the things that are. So that means that right now, people look at you and they go, man, this guy, why should he be preaching the gospel? Well, what's happening is they're following a system that is based upon lies. So what is, is a lie, and we need to bring that to not. And so what happens is, is God is using us because we are foolish. We, are, we dare to put our full trust in Christ. We dare to mock their systems. We dare to let God have all the glory. So, and that brings us to 29. That no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him are you in Christ Jesus. Who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glories, let him glory, glory in the Lord. So, folks, I know a lot of people think I'm full of crap, but right here, this is black and white. All glory has to belong to God. You, you. What happens is, is he, he lets us fight against him and he lets us be his enemies and he lets us make complete and utter fools out of ourselves so that when we do recognize his love for us, we can see that he loved us while we were his enemies, while we were crucifying, spitting on him, beating him, mocking him, you know, just going about and in and, and our religious zeal like me, going about and mocking him in every single moment and while claiming to be his servant. But then when I saw the love that he loves me with, I can see that I did nothing for that. I was an enemy to him when he loved me. So that now when I walk around, I have the absolute confidence that if he saved me while I was an enemy, I can't even by being an enemy lose what he gave me. Back then, when I was an enemy. I, I, folks, that should be comforting to everybody. On top of that, um, he uses the foolish things of the world like you and me. He uses the base things, the things that are despised. Because you have the audacity 
to have confidence before God. And these religious people or, or sinners, whatever one, um, they look at you and go, wow, you really have no reason to have that confidence. And you're going to go, absolutely right. I don't have any reason to have this confidence before God other than the one that purchased me in his own blood. So Jesus' blood. So all the denominations, which, I mean, if you look at the beginning of our nation, the reason why we had this separation of church and state problem is because all the denominations squabbling about their children being taught different doctrines. And so now we have this big system in place where God is removed out of our government because of our squabbling. Well, folks, think about it this way. Are we going to squabble about different doctrines? Or are you and I going to all with one assent all point to the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, look at his blood and say, that's enough, and agree. Because, folks, whenever the high priest went in to the, to the Holy of Holies, he took in with him the, the incense and the, the, the coals off the altar of incense, and he took them into the Holy of Holies. And that, that the Holy of Holies inside that, that box, that 10 cubit by 10 cubit box, filled with a cloud of incense and smoke. Well, what happened was, is that the priest... Um, when he came in there, the high priest, when he would go in there, there's no record of him taking any light in there at all. It was complete darkness. But, and think about that in your conscience. Think about that as us, as the church being expressed and hidden right now. And God waiting for the manifold church to be expressed. Well, think about that darkness. And the, there's a cloud in the darkness. But what happens is, is that when the, when the priest would get in there and he would do his, he would confess the sins of the people, and he would take some blood and he would sprinkle it between the two cherubims of glory that sat on top, on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. Well, those two cherubims, two is always the number of witness. And those two cherubims, when they're looking down at that mercy seat and they see that blood, well, poof, God's Shekinah glory shows in the cloud. Well, that's evidence for us is that when you and I, when we all come together and we're not looking at doctrines or outside, you know, righteousness, and we're not looking at all these things that we're looking at that blood and we go all with one accord and say that blood was enough. When we do that, all of us shed all of our religious doctrines. We get rid of everything that doesn't matter automatically. We're not worrying about whether you're baptized correctly or speaking in tongues or what day the Sabbath is on or whether or not you're eating, drinking, burping, farting, cussing, whatever. Those things are are ancillary. They're not even <laughs> they're not even a part of this right now. So folks, I welcome you to come with me, with each other, and each one of us we just agree on that blood that it's enough. Just like Abel did. Just like Cain killed him. I mean, you know, just like it's very interesting because the difference between Cain and Abel, Abel was saying that God's sacrifice was right and enough. King, on the other hand, was saying, no, I need to add to his sacrifice. And he was going about contriving and covering himself up, just like Adam and Eve did with their sacrifice when they, when they first knew they were naked and they hid from God. So, folks, hypocrisy comes from accusation and condemnation. Hypocrisy is the kingdom of Satan, or the image of Satan. The truth comes with no condemnation, and the truth is the image of Christ. So if you want to be in his likeness, you have to hear the word of your salvation that you are pleasing to God, that there is nothing left between you and him, and that you are commanded, therefore, to enter into his presence without any fear or shame or guilt. Just come, because in that place, he'll transform you. He'll use you as a tool for whatever he wants, because I don't know what God wants to use you for. Look at me, look at Nick, look at Art. We, all three of us are different, but he, God uses us each in a different and unique way. So folks, get on it. You're awesome. Jesus thinks so, all right? So anyways, folks, you are the church, and let's get this word out there, all right? And don't forget to subscribe and like and Write comments if you want. And uh, anyway, I love you all. Good night.